Hi, my name is Joe Murray. I'm a gastroenterologist at the Mayo Clinic. I'm talking to you today about a recent paper published in the journal Pediatrics. This study came from Sweden and it examines, the, it examines where celiac disease occurs in children. And what this group did was they studied over 7,000 children and tested them for celiac disease. And they found over 2% of them had celiac disease that had not been previously known. And really what they looked at with this study was they looked at, well, could you predict those people who had celiac disease? And in particular, could you predict them by using the current guidelines for detection of celiac disease? So right now there are several groups, both in Europe, in North America, as well as worldwide groups, that have made recommendations on who to test for celiac disease. Well, if these if these children had been basically subjected to those guidelines and only those who fit the guidelines were tested, most of these patients with celiac disease would never have been found and were only found by screening. Now the authors say that, well, they applied questionnaires to these children before testing and they asked them about things known to be associated with celiac disease family history, for example, of celiac disease, or other or symptoms that could be the result of celiac disease. And those were not helpful. Um, there were a couple of things that were, for example, if the child had Down syndrome, or tris otherwise known as trisomy 21, that was associated with a, an increased likelihood of celiac disease. But symptoms themselves, at least the symptoms we know are caused by celiac disease, um, simply weren't a predictor of who would have celiac disease and who would not have celiac disease. Now this is not the first study that has shown this, but it's one of the largest. Other studies done in the US as well as in Sweden in adults have suggested that in adult groups, symptoms don't necessarily predict celiac disease. So where does this leave us? Well, it leaves us still with what I call a diagnostic or detection dilemma. Who do we test for celiac disease? And what should be done about people who want to go on a gluten-free diet? And I think some practitioners have taken the case, well, if somebody doesn't really have symptoms of celiac disease and they want to try a gluten-free diet to see if it makes them feel better, that's okay. But now maybe this suggests that we should test people before anybody tries a gluten-free diet because we don't know who will have it and who won't have it. It also means that the professional organizations that develop the guidelines perhaps need to go back and rethink it. And we as scientists need to go back and figure out, well, how do we tell who has celiac disease? Um, and perhaps even ask another question, does it matter if we find celiac disease in those people who don't have the usual symptoms of celiac disease? As a clinician who sees lots of people with celiac disease, many of whom don't have any of the traditional symptoms, I would disagree and suggest that a lot of patients who don't even feel that they're sick can get better and actually feel better on a gluten-free diet once you discover their celiac disease. So there's lots of celiac disease out there, most remains undetected, and we really have to figure out what's the best way of finding them. Thank you.